Hello everybody and good evening. So tonight we're doing another tutorial video. This one, as you can see, is labeled Scolopendra Polymorpha slash Astacorum. Now the reason for that is that we're working with the Rio Grande Giant right now. So the Rio Grande Giant is exactly the same kind of centipede as those California True Blues, um, and I don't know if you're following the stuff right now, but those True Blues, everyone, um, they're calling them NorCal Astacorum because there's a lot of similarities between those True Blues and the Astacorum and these Rio Grande Giants. So you could call this a Rio Grande Astacorum, but there's been no real work done on any of this, so for layman's terms, we're just calling it a polymorpha today. I'm not going to get everything confused. I will compare it for you to a California patternless polymorpha that I know is a true polymorpha. They don't really get any bigger than uh, like four and a half inches. So she is a subadult. She right now is something like 13 and a half centimeters, so in inches, that's a little bit over five and a quarter. Um, but let's move right along here. I'll show you guys the difference and then we'll put this enclosure together. And I think she'll really like it. So let's get going here. All right, so here we got ourselves a California Polymorpha. This is a kind of neat one, it's a uh, patternless. Um, but this one is about one, uh, one molt away from being an adult. Um, and as you can see, it's not super huge, but this is about how big they are typically, just a little bit bigger than this. Um, I have seen massive specimens of these pushing like four and a half inches, uh, but really nothing bigger than that. Anyways, this is my sub-adult female, eager to get out. She's a Rio Grande giant. Um, they're a lot uh, similar to Heroes when you really compare them up close, uh, or Astacorum than something like your Polymorpha. She, uh, again, is something like 13 and a half centimeters or five and a quarter inches, um, but she will get much larger. I've personally kept specimens over 17 centimeters, which is a really, really significant centipede. Um, anyways, let's get moving right along here and get their uh, enclosure set up, or at least her enclosure, and uh, yeah. Now this tutorial is going to work for Astacorum, Polymorpha, California True Blue, or NorCal Astacorum, whatever you want to call it. Um, so it's a pretty versatile tutorial here, that's why I've labeled it Scolopendra Polymorpha slash Astacorum. Anyways, you're going to want yourself a high ventilation enclosure. This is a desert species, they are susceptible, or susceptible excuse me, to mycosis infections so you want very little humidity uh, if any at all um, if you live in a humid area you're going to want more air holes than this um, you'll want to put rows in between here i live in a really low humidity climate so i don't need quite as many but i still want high ventilation in here um, now we're going to be using a desert setup obviously uh, for substrate so you're going to want sand you're going to want a lot of this. You're going to want 80% sand or maybe even 90% sand like in my case here and then only 10% peat mix. Um, it's going to allow for great burrowing which Astacorum and Polymorpho or the Rio Grande Giants or True Blues enjoy doing of course, you know, burrowing. Um, they're actually very accomplished in comparison to something like a Heroes at burrowing. Anyways, Let's move along and start getting this enclosure set up. All right, now we got our substrate mixed. Um, I've made it a little bit damp and I've packed it down really hard. This is going to enable proper um, burrow construction. Uh, as it dries out, that's going to be fine. Um, you're going to want to miss this maybe, maybe once a week. Um, I do like to leave an active water dish for this species um, because I do like to keep their enclosures so dry. I mean bone dry most of the time. Um, now there's going to be a pretty good layer of leaf litter that'll keep humidity in. Um, but again, I personally like water dishes. You don't need to use them. It's just a precautionary thing. But anyways, let's get with the next layer here. Um, what we're going to be doing 
now is adding the uh, rocks and the uh, wood to this, the bark. This is going to be a good enclosure for breeding um, because of how we're going to construct it. But anyways, I'll show you guys that right now. All right, so here we go. Now, the reason this works well for breeding is because it makes a centralized area for them to crawl through if they are going to do it above ground. If it's in a burrow, that's, you know, a different story because uh, alternans are, forgive me, polymorpha um, and astacorum, not alternans, <laughs> um, tend to burrow a lot and they can lay webs in burrows. Now, other species don't do that so much, but this is particularly a species that does do that. Um, now, above ground, this is your centralized area. They can walk through this gap right here. This covers it. It gives them an area to lay the sperm web. This has worked for me well in the past. Um, it's pretty much a surefire way to do it. Um, again, you know, I should say uh, with centipedes, there's never any surefire or any perfect method of breeding but it does help do something like this anyways let's get that leaf litter put in there now all right and there you have it just as easy as that we got a perfect enclosure set up this can house the centipede pretty much all of its life with something this big um, and it's not going to have any shortage of uh, any enrichment in its life it's going to run into this stuff in the wild um, and it's going to have room to burrow. Uh, it's a very clean, easy to keep up with enclosure. And it's multi-purpose. You can just use this for a breeding enclosure if you want to. So let's get the female in there. Alright, I think she's really going to like this enclosure. Let's put that cup down. Get her to turn around here. So she's heading the right direction. Let's put her down there. There we go. She's going to explore her new enclosure, but uh, yeah. I hope this helps you guys out. Again, you can use this for Scolopendra polymorpha, Astacorum, the True Blue, Rio Grande Giants in this particular situation, um, and all those centipedes. Uh, until next time, uh, here at Mike's House of a Thousand Legs. I'll see you later. One last thing. Sneak peek at my next tutorial video. It's going to be Scolopendra Heroes. This is going to be a peedling. So yeah, stay tuned. Hit that like button, subscribe. Um, sorry for that uh, crappy exit uh, in the video I just said there. I'm, I'm a little tired here. Uh, I was collecting today. Um, but anyways, uh, we'll see you guys later. Check me out on Instagram if you have time, or if you have an Instagram, that is. Um, but I appreciate all the support, and again, have a wonderful night.